There are three special percentiles that are so special that we get them their own names. They're called quartiles. So the quartiles are the three values that divide your data into an ordered data set into four equal parts. So the median, which would be the middle score right here, of course, let's see, let me make it blue. Median is right here, would be the second quartile. So that would be the Q2, but that would make it the 50th percentile. We already saw that before. So it's 50th percentile. So P little subscript 50. So the 50th percentile or the second quartile. Um, let me put comma P50 right here. Why is it that way? Well, because 50% of the data would be at or below that score, right? It's 50% below, 50% above. Now, what about the first quartile? Okay, so the first quartile is right here at this little line. And you can see I'm kind of hinting there's something called a box plot here, right? So Q1 is P25. It's the 25th percentile, or P25. And what that means is that there's 25% of the data set below that value. And over here, you're thinking, what's that value right there? That's the minimum, the lowest value you have. And over here is the maximum. So if the median has 50% below it, that means there's 25 here and there's 25% in here. Now you'll notice they're not equal width, but they're equal percentages. That's key, just like with the percentiles, right? They're not equally spaced, they're equally um, proportioned in terms of the percentage that's in each section. So we'll make a note right here. Quartiles are not evenly spaced. I mean, they can be, but it's, it's not necessary. So not necessarily evenly spaced. Necessarily evenly spaced. What they have is an even percentage, right? but they have equal percentage, in this case, 25% in each section. And as you can see, we're talking about a box plot, right? That's why section 3.5 is kind of in here, right? The equal percent, which would be 25% for a quartile, 1% for a per, uh, percentile. If you ever hear something called a decile, that's 10%. So. Um, in case you ever hear of it. All right, so then there's another 25% in this section because it's got to be 25, 25, 25, 25 to keep that equal percent in each piece. Okay, well then what would that make this? Well, that's going to be Q3, which is the 75th percentile or the third quartile. So P75. Right, so 75% is below this value. All right, now if I take the quartiles together along with the minimum and maximum, so these three are the quartiles, the three quartiles, and the min and the max, I've done something called the five number summary. Now the five number summary is really nice because it's a concise way to give a distribution. It shows the center, which is the median. It shows the spread which is technically the distance from Q1 to Q3. We'll get more into that later. It's got a name, it's called the IQR. And it tells you another measure of spread. It tells you the range, which is the distance from min to max. So it's a really nice way to give a data set, well, a numerical summary of a data set, which is what we're supposed to be looking for in chapter three. Speaking of which, let's calculate the five number summary here. Now, I have an important point to make that a lot of students mess up. So they see two rows and they think, oh, in the calculator, I should put these into two columns. No, 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 no. This is all one data set. So it all goes in one column. It all goes in L1 like this, okay? So I'll make a little note over here. That's a very common mistake. Note, this is all one data set so place in one column. 
I cannot stress that enough. That's a mistake a lot of people make on exams. So if you and if you do it wrong, then everything's wrong. So this is all one data set. So we're going to put this all into L1 in one column, which you can see I already did in the calculator. In StatCrunch, which this will be available to you. If you look up exam three, you know, MAT 133 exam three, it'll pop up because these were the exam three scores from winter 2014. And there they all are in a nice little list, but it's all one column. There's not two columns. I just can't write one column, one row here. I would lose space on the paper. So don't mistake paper saving as two columns of data. Okay. All right. So we're going to find the five number summary. Um, I'll do it with the calculator first this time. So with the calculator, I have all those data points in there. So then I go to stat, calculate, one variable. You do not want your frequency list. So if you have a frequency list right here, you want to clear it out. It should be blank. Do not get your freak on, right? So we'll make a little note. If you're using one variable stat, on TI-84, if you're using that, no, um, no frequency list. Okay. All right, so go down to calculate and press enter. And the five number summary is at the bottom. So you have to hit the down arrow a bit. And there's the min, there's Q1, there's the median, there's Q3, and there's the max. So the minimum, and I put this data set in order, so it wasn't exactly difficult to find, but it's 54, 76, 84, 88.5, and 93. There they are. In StatCrunch, it's even faster. Well, I don't know if it's faster. So go to Summary Stats columns, oops, summary stat, columns, click column, exam three scores, and then what do you want to find? It actually has a big list of all of them right to begin with, but if you want them in order, you can do that. So you can say, all right, let's see here, I'm going to scroll through here. I want the min, hold down my control button, I'm going to go find the quartile, oop, oop, not that control button, there it is, hold down control, Q, Q1, There it is. And then median. And then I'm holding down my control button to do this, but I, you can't hold and scroll. That's what I, the mistake I just made. So I'm lifting up on my control button so I can scroll. But then I, when I want to select the next one, oh, there it is, control max right there. I mean, another way you can do this is just say, hey, I want everything. <laughs> so I hit control A and it's gonna find me all of this stuff. Sure, that'll work. I mean, it doesn't really make any difference. So I would just have to search. If I don't go in order, I have to search for them. So there's the min at 54. There's the max at 93. There's Q1 at 77. Ah, Q3 is 88. Now notice that's a little bit different. And then the median is 84. The median and the Q3s are a little bit different because they're actually different ways to compute them based on what kind of computer program you're working with. So StatCrunch says it's 88. Um, the calculator says 88.5. So we'll make a little note of that. Um, that's actually a very common issue with calculator programs and computer programs in general. So um, actually, it should really go up here. I'll just make another note uh, here. Note. Different programs, computer programs and calculator, can find the median and the quartile slightly differently. They'll be close, but they might not be exactly the same to each other. I'm sorry, that was off screen. Now the by hand method tends to match with the calculator. So um, in the TI-84, the TI-84 does the by hand method um, the same, right? So it's the same as the by hand method. But it is very common. Excel finds them different. StatCrunch finds them different. Um, differently, I should say. Uh, Minitab finds them differently. They, all the computer programs find them slightly differently from each other. So they might be a little bit different. All right, so I'm going to stick with the T84 
ti 84 numbers because that's what i wrote first um on, on a side note let's find the by hand since i mentioned it could be done so you'll notice 84 is the median i put this data set in order so you can see right here there's the median right there and then q1 which is 76 is right here it's the halfway spot between these two numbers, right? So it's the median of the bottom half. So if you take the bottom half of numbers from 83 down to 54, 76 is the median of that half. And on the top half from 84 up to 93, 88.5 right there. That's the top half, right? Now, how are the computer programs doing it? Well, sometimes the computer programs are including 84 in there. So if you go 84 to 93, then 88 is the median, right? Which is what the stat crunch is doing. It happens. Um, different programs will find them slightly differently. That's okay. All right. And min and max are pretty obvious. I mean, the min's down here. Hello, min. The max is right here. And that's only because I put the data set in order when I typed it up. So it makes it easy. But notice, having these five numbers gives us all sorts of ideas. We know the range is from here to here. Right? We know the center is right here, right? the average. And then there's something else. The distance from Q1 to Q3 is another measure of spread. That's different from the range. It's called IQR, the interquartile range. And we'll see that in the next video.